viewers from all over the world, GLCC family, and also those also connecting us through call conference. We thank God for this session and for this service. It's our deliverance service. And I believe God is going to touch your life. God is going to deliver you. God is going to restore you today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, I want us to pray together in the mighty name of Jesus Christ as we begin this service. As I always say, distance is not a barrier. As we will be praying, the power of God will flow. And where you are, the power of God will manifest. It will heal you. The power will deliver you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you. We worship you. We exalt you. Thank you for my viewers. Thank you for the GLCC family. Thank you, Father, even for them that are connecting uh, with this platform, Lord, through calling. Daddy, we worship you. Daddy, we honor you. Daddy, we exalt you. Show your power. Show yourself. Daddy, meet your people at the point of their needs and let your name be exalted. Thank you, Father. Malobu shatalaba. Ziko toso kobolo bushila la baba. Malaba bushindi libi so talaba. Lema segedele be zunda la ba. Show yourself to this brother. Show yourself to this sister. And let your name be exalted. We love you and worship you, Lord. We declare no interference. We break every influence, every barrier, every disturbance. We break it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare breakthrough. In the lives of your people. Open our understanding and let your name be exalted. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Once again, welcome to this deliverance service in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Deliverance is very key and very powerful in the life of a believer. Just as the Bible says, upon Mount Zion in the book of Obadiah chapter 1 now read first number 17 the Bible says but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. There are blessings you cannot possess when you remain bound. Therefore, deliverance is very key in the life of a brother. Even though many people fight deliverance, and they go saying there is nothing called deliverance, but I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, Deliverance is real. Deliverance is not an imagination. In the book of John, chapter number 8, Jesus was preaching the word. He was ministering the word. And the Bible says, as he was ministering the word, in verse number 30, then Jesus said unto them, Okay, many people believed in him after after he preached the word to them, many people believed in him. The Bible says, first that he, and as he spoke these words, many believed on him. First that one. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. He spoke to them that believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? First that he too. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He was speaking to them that had believed on him. He preached to them, and they believed him. After believing him, he told them to continue in his word. 
in his teaching and in continuing they will come to the knowledge of the truth and the truth will make them free so he spoke of deliverance deliverance he is made an invitation in matthew chapter number 11 verse 28 come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden come and learn of me for i am making glory and i shall give you rest giving rest is a process of deliverance rest is a process of deliverance giving people rest is a process of deliverance so deliverance is not an imagination deliverance is real and is needed in our lives though those people who claim they do not need deliverance they usually say what jesus christ did on the cross was once and for all that is true but you need to know the entire truth yes he did a perfect job at the cross but you need to realize to know the entire truth it's not enough just to post there on the scripture you need to connect with other scriptures and know the truth they usually say those people they usually say and demon cannot stain me I cannot be demon possessed, I don't need deliverance. Yes, they are talking a bit of the truth. If you are born again, you cannot be demon possessed. That's the truth. If you are born again, it means Jesus has possessed you. You belong to Jesus. You cannot belong to Jesus Christ and at the same time belong to Satan. So there is no born again Christ. Christian, there is no born again child of God who can be demon possessed. So if you are born again, you are not demon possessed. You are Jesus Christ possessed. But listen, you can be demon oppressed. To be demon oppressed means there are certain areas in your life that the enemy is oppressing. It may be your finances. There are many people, yes, Jesus Christ did a perfect work in delivering mankind. And one of the areas he handled was our finances. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, talking of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Although he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. He is he paid for our poverty that we might be rich. But how many people in the church are wallowing in poverty and yet Jesus Christ paid for our poverty? The, what it means here, they are not demon possessed, but they may be afflict, oppressed, afflicted by poverty. A force of poverty might be sitting on their finances. Jesus Christ did a perfect work as far as our help is concerned. The Bible says he took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. But in 1 Peter chapter, chapter number 2, verse 24, after bearing our sins on his own body, the Bible says by his stripes we were healed. You were healed over 2,000 years ago. The truth is, you were healed. But how many people are sick today? The enemy is afflicted. Sickness is not from God. Sickness is from the enemy. We see in Job chapter 2, verse 7, And Satan left the presence of God and smote the body of Job with boils, sore boils, with infirmities, with sore boils, with, with sicknesses. It is Satan who plagues people with infirmity. So, there are many people who are sick, and that sickness is, is a result of the enemy. So, for those who are being oppressed and afflicted by the enemy, they need deliverance. We can also say someone can be demonized. To be demonized means a demon may attack and influence you to make decisions. And the rate it flees away. For example, you may see a born again brother 
beating his wife. And after beating his wife, he will come to his senses later and wonder what he did, what came upon him to beat his lovely wife. He, he, he can't explain what happened, but the truth is a demon came upon him, demonized him, influenced him, and he did awful things. And after it left him, that someone who is demonized is not demon possessed, but is demonized. So deliverance is needed in the body of Christ. Deliverance is needed in the body of Christ. Jesus Christ, according to the prophecy by David in Psalm 1, 110. Let's read together there in Psalm 110. Now read first number number one. Psalm 110. Let's read together, please, my viewers. First, number, number one, the Bible says, The Lord say unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right arm until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord say to my Lord, Sit thou at my right arm. It was talking of Jesus Christ to sit at the right hand side of the Father until he makes his enemies his food is true. Now the question is, was this prophecy fulfilled? Yes, it was fulfilled at the cross when Jesus Christ died and rose. And right now he's sitting at the right hand side of the Father. That prophecy was fulfilled. But there is something I wanted to understand about prophecy. Prophecy may be fulfilled in three dimensions. Number one, it was fulfilled. Number two, it is being fulfilled. And number three, it shall be fulfilled. Let me give this also uh, this illustration. For example, the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. But the Bible also says, we are saved daily. Daily we are saved. And the Bible says, when Jesus shall come back, we shall be saved. What do we mean by the application, uh, uh, application of those words? When you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, surrendering your life to Jesus Christ, you were saved from sin. You were translated, according to Colossians 1, 13, you were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Right now, your name is in the book of life. You are a child of God. You are born again. But daily we are saved. We are delivered from the, from, from the enemy. We are delivered. We are saved. We are saved daily from the traps that the enemy sets before us to cause us to fall back to sin. We are saved daily. And number three, when Jesus, the Bible says, those who shall endure to the end, they shall be saved. So that word of salvation was fulfilled when you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. And if you have not yet surrendered your life, you need to surrender now. And daily, we work out our salvation daily with the fear and trembling. For Jesus may come at any time. And those who shall endure to the hand, they shall enter into that into the into the home of eternity into into that home of god into the kingdom into heavenly jerusalem they shall enter there forever now let's come back to the world of talking of jesus christ he defeated satan he conquered we can see this in the book of evasions chapter one let's read evasions chapter one and see this scripture please evasions Chapter number one, I'll read verse 19, talking of the work that the Father did in Christ when he raised him from the dead. The Bible says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards all who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality 
and the power and the might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and are they put all things and underline that judgment and are they put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church so from that scripture we see all things were put under Jesus Christ, under the feet of Jesus Christ. And when we talk of the under the feet of Jesus Christ, here we are talking of the church. Jesus Christ is the head. The body is the church. Jesus was raised together with the church. And he was raised far above principalities, powers, all the forces of the weak. And he, he sat at the right hand side of the Father. And all things were put under his feet. All things were subjected under his feet. See, talk of sickness, talk of death, talk of infirmity, in failure, curses. Every challenge that is challenging the people of God was subdued by Jesus Christ. It was put under, under the feet of Christ. Now listen, look at the, what the word of God says in the Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'll read first number 12. Hebrew chapter 10. And I will read first number 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 11, number 12, and first number 13. Hebrew 10. The Bible says, But this man, talking of Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Expecting, let the word expecting, till his enemies be made his footstool. Expecting, till his enemies be made his footstool. Meaning, his enemies are being put under. Yes, he, he subdued them. But his body, which is the church, needs the knowledge of the truth to subdue. That's why I began by saying, yes, he paid for our sicknesses. He conquered sicknesses. But look at the body of Jesus Christ, the church. He is still suffering under some sicknesses. There are brethren in the church who are still suffering under sicknesses. They are supposed to arise. To the knowledge of the truth and subdue those sicknesses to be put under. That's what Christ is expecting till his enemies. P uh, Apostle Paul in 1st Corinthians 15, verse 23 to 28, is talking of death, the last enemy to be put under. But as it mean Jesus didn't conquer death, Jesus conquered death. Hebrew 2. Chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, He paralyzed, He destroyed all and the power of our dead, and that is Satan. And He delivered all those who are under the oppression of death because of fear. He subdued death. But what do we mean by Paul saying, Death shall be put? It means death has to be put under our feet. Though we are born again and we have dominion over death, at one time in life, we shall sleep. That means we shall depart from our bodies, that is death. And when we shall depart from our bodies, that means death will have no dominion anywhere. It will have no effect at all. Yes, you have dominion now over death, but there shall come a time when you shall say, where is your sting, O oh, death? Where is your power, death? I can no longer die. That means you have moved over. So those are some of the enemies we are waiting to put under our feet. That's why we talk of deliverance, subduing whatever else is remaining. In other words, manifesting the victory of Jesus Christ only. Let me say it again. Manifesting the victory that Jesus Christ apprehended for us, manifesting the conquest of Christ 
y con gat de y con gat sickness y con gat poverty but still the church is suffering and the church is the body of Christ so when all these afflictions will be under the feet of Christ in manifestation under the feet of the church under the church in manifestation that's when we can say we are fully operating in total liberty total liberty satan has no authority at all you have conquered all so now we are working on the knowledge of the truth to make this a reality to make the victory that jesus got for us a reality to make it a reality to make it a reality and for us to make it a reality that's why we need the knowledge of the truth let's go to psalms 45 please child of god may the lord give you understanding psalms 45 psalms 45 for you to to walk in full victory you need the knowledge of the truth psalm 45 I'll read verse number three. The Bible says, Guard thy sword upon thy die. When we talk of the sword here, we are talking of the word of God, but now in a dimension of warfare. We are talking of the word of God, but in the consciousness of warfare. Because in Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says, talking of the sword of the spirit, which is the word and in that chapter from verse number 10 all the way to verse 18 the bible is talking of fighting spiritual warfare for we do not wage war against flesh and blood but against principalities and it begins to talk of the weapons of a warfare and among the weapons the offensive weapons is the weapon of the word and the word in that dimension is called the sword of the spirit which is the word so when the Bible says in Psalm 45, guard thy sword upon thy die, O most mighty, it means walk by the word in the consciousness of warfare, in the consciousness of fighting. Do you remember the Bible says the, since the days of John the Baptist, 11, Matthew 11, the kingdom of God, verse 12, suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. The violent, the violent take it by force. So it means the application of the word in the dimension of warfare. Application of the truth of the word in the dimension of warfare. Now let's continue. We are in Psalm 45. God thy sword upon thy die, O most mighty. Now the Lord here is calling you most mighty. He's calling you mighty. The word most was not there. That's why it is it's written in Greek, in, in Italic. It was not there in the original. Oh, mighty. The Lord is calling you mighty. The word mighty here means is calling you a warrior. Oh, a warrior. The, another translation calls you a warrior. Guard thy sword upon thy thigh. Upon thy thigh means upon your feet. Walk by the sword. Walk by the sword of the spirit. Walk by the word. O mighty warrior, O warrior, with thy glory and thy majesty. Now, the Lord calling you mighty here is saying you are a man of honor. Look at Gideon. And the angel visited Gideon as he was hiding himself to grind the wheat, to grind the wheat in, the, in the fear of the Midianites. He was hiding himself. But look at what the angel said when the angel appeared to him. He said, how art thou, mighty man of Allah? The angel is calling Gideon a mighty man of Allah. He's calling him mighty man of Allah. So the Bible is not made a mistake here, calling you mighty. It's calling you a man of war. It's calling you a, a, a mighty man in battle. You are a man of war. You are a man of war. So you are supposed to walk in the consciousness of war, in the consciousness of war. Life is not a fun affair. Life is not fair. It will never give you what you desire. It will give you what you demand. What we mean by this? You will never get what you desire by sitting down and wishing life was better. 
you will get your position by fighting. You will get what belongs to you by fighting. You have to force the enemy out of your marriage, force the enemy out of your finances, force the enemy out of your children through warfare. Now, when you are forcing the enemy out of your life, that's what we are talking of warfare. We are talking of deliverance. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, look at first number, first number four. And in thy majesty, ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness, and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. First number four, the Bible says, and in thy majesty. That means you have a palace, you have a dominion, you have a domain as a king, as a king, because in the in the kingdom of God, we don't talk of gender here. If you are a woman, you are you are just a man with a home. That's why they call you a woman. You are a man. So that we are doing talk of queens here, we talk of kings. So you are also a king. He has made us kings and the priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That is Revelation chapter, chapter number five, verse ten. He has made you a king. So as a king, you have a domain, you have a royalty, you have a throne to reign, you have a throne to rule, you have your own domain. First, first number four, the Bible says, and in thy majesty, ride prosperously. Even though things might not be working as you wish, even though things may be hard on you, the truth is, child of God, you have a great destiny. You have the destiny of a king. You have a destiny of a lion. You are you are not lambish. You are you are a lion. You have a you have royalty in you. You have kingship in you. You have a domain. You have to rule. You have to take charge. Take charge over your life. You must overcome that challenge. You must take over in the name of Jesus Christ. You must subdue that situation because being under is not your is not your possession. It's not your portion. Being under that affliction is not your possession. You need to arise. The Bible is telling us, ride in majesty. Ride in majesty. In majesty, ride. Hear what Habakkuk says. In Abaku chapter 3, it says, verse 17, Even if there will be no sheep in the fall, there will be no flock at all, the fig trees will have nothing bearing. There will be no oil in the palm trees. He says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord my God, in the Lord God my salvation, who will cause my feet to walk upon mine eye place. Hear what Abaku says, even though things are not working for me, I will rejoice in the Lord God of my salvation, for he will make my feet. May the Lord make your feet this evening in the name of Jesus. May the Lord strengthen your feet to overcome that challenge, that you may be able to ride in majesty prosperously. To ride prosperously here means to move and in that. It means to progress in life as if the enemy never existed. To move forward as if there were no witches at all. It means to progress in life as if there were no barriers. We know barriers are there, but we need to awake to the knowledge of the truth, which will cause us to ride and hinder, which will cause us to fly in life. And I see you fly in life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's why I say, even during this pandemic, yes, of coronavirus, COVID-19, while some people are going down, others will rise. There are people, while others are closing businesses, others will be opening new businesses, others will be scaling higher and higher in the name of Jesus Christ. While others will be sinking, others will be rising, will be rising. Now, let me continue. You need to position yourself well by the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says, and in thy majesty, Psalm 45, verse number 4, and in thy majesty, ride prosperously because of truth. Number one, what will cause you to ride prosperously is truth. 
and meekness and righteousness and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things thy right hand teaching you terrible things simply means you will see the manifestation of this blessing in your life they'll be tangible they'll be in your hands talking of hell to be in your hand in your hands prosperity in your hands victory in your hands it is by the truth meekness and righteousness so those are three forces very key now let me talk of the truth here because because of time because of time the truth riding by the truth riding by the truth by the truth you will ride prosperously in manchester because of the truth so what is the truth jesus tells pilate i came to bear witness of the truth and pilate asked him what is the truth what is the truth the bible says in john 17 17 sanctify them by the truth thy word is the truth so the truth here is the revelation of god's word you can't just pick the Bible and say this is the truth. No, you must get the revelation of the truth. The revelation and the application of the truth that you know is what sets you free. Is what sets you free. For example, during Easter, I took time to teach people what exactly happened on the cross. How Jesus Christ suffered for us. How he paid what was required in the supreme court of the universe because that was demanded. The Bible says, The soul that sinned die as to die, the soul that sinned shall die. Now, we were born in sin and were living in sin, therefore, we were supposed to die according to the supreme court of the universe. Yet, Jesus died for us. He chose to die for us. He laid his life down for us. He died for us. So, according to that principle, your case was set up. Your issue was set up. Jesus conquered for us. So, you need to meditate on this truth, to stand on that truth and resist death by all means under all circumstances. In the name of Jesus Christ, standing on the truth of the word. By his stripes, we were healed. Does it matter the name of the sickness, the name of the infirmity? Stand on the truth. Stand on that word. Stand on the word and resist the enemy violently. After resisting the enemy, when Jesus was in the wilderness, the enemy came again in the second temptation. He still came again in the third temptation. Jesus resisted the enemy. That's how we live by the truth. Guard thy sword upon thy die, O most, o most mighty, and ride prosperously because of truth. In thy majesty, ride prosperously because of truth. So you must get all of the truth. And tell the enemy whether he likes it or not, you will enjoy marriage. You will get married. And not just getting married, you will enjoy marriage. You will not only enjoy marriage, you will get up children in the name of Jesus Christ, standing on the truth. Ride prosperously. Ride prosperously in majesty, in your domain, in your royalty. Because of the truth get out of the truth and resist the enemy and he will flee away from you in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord right also prosperously because of meekness and when i talk of meekness here i talk of you submitting yourself to the word of god because we are talking of operating in meekness in meekness in meekness means means you have allowed jesus christ to be lord over all to be lord over your life 
To many people, Jesus is their Savior. But very few people, Jesus is their Lord. Jesus must become your Savior and then move to level two of allowing to become Lord. You allow him to command you. You allow him to dictate you. You allow him to, to guide your life. You, you subject your life under the word of God in totality. You see the Bible says, Submit yourself under the mighty hand of the enemy. Resist the enemy and he shall flee away. Now many people read that scripture halfway. They only quote where the Bible says, Resist the devil and he shall flee away. You can't resist the devil until you have submitted yourself under the mighty hand of God. Look at this word in the book of James, please. In the book of James, then we shall be getting into prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. James chapter number 4, verse number 7. The Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God. What do we mean by submitting yourself to God? To submit your means, take yourself willingly. Put yourself under the control of God. Allow God to control you. Allow God to control you in every respect and in all aspect. In all respect and aspect of your life. Allow God to become master over your life. Allow him to become commander until he becomes commander of your life. You can't command any issue in life. Allow him to become commander over your finances. Allow him to become commander in the name of Jesus Christ. That's how I will tell you, if you allow him to become commander of your life, you never deny him anything he will ask from you. You never deny him your time. You will submit yourself only to him. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He can never flee from you until you have submitted yourself first to God, and then you come to the level of violence, resisting him. Many people want to resist the devil by shouting, Shindwa, Satan is Shindwa. You cannot fight the enemy that way. You must submit yourself totally to his word. Allow him to become Lord over you. Be, allow him to be Lord. That's what he said in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 11. And I quoted here very well. Look at Matthew. Let me read Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. And I'll read verse 28. A very common verse we read. But it's not common to many. It may be common to a few. Look at verse number 28. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. You know, the enemy is laying burdens on you. The enemy is trying to oppress you, to afflict you here and there. He says, and I will give you rest. Verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you. Now, you allow Jesus to remove the yoke of the enemy from you. Then from there, you, you yourself, you will take the yoke of Jesus upon yourself and learn of me. Give yourself now to learn the truth, to know the truth. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. No wonder, no situation that could stand before Jesus Christ. Because Jesus was walking in meekness. He is the truth. He operated in the knowledge of the truth. And number two, he was operating in meekness. He was operating in meekness. That's why even the storms were bowing to him. The storms of life will bow to you as you operate in the knowledge of the truth. And he says, also talking about Jesus Christ in Philippians 2, he humbled himself even to the dead of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That in the name of the Lord, every name shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And finally, is walking in righteousness. Walking in righteousness means here, having a right standing before the Lord, not allowing guiltiness at all to pin you down.
standing right before the Lord, walking in the reality. Remember, he said that righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach. Walking in the righteousness, walking in the in the right standing, not allowing guilty at all, guilty of sin to pin you down. Allow me because of time to pause there for tonight. But I want to pray with you wherever you are. By these things I'm teaching you, Satan has no dominion over your life. Sickness has no dominion over your life. But you must awake to this truth. You must awake and become a doer of the word. James says, whatsoever he had read this word and does not do it, does not become a doer, he is deceiving himself. Is like a man who look at on, onto his face on a mirror, and when he go away, that way, he can't remember how he was, how his image was like. But whatsoever the Bible says, whatsoever he had read this word and doed it, the Bible says, this man shall be blessed in his deed. He shall be blessed indeed. He shall be blessed indeed. When you begin to walk in the reality of what I'm teaching you, Satan gets paralyzed. Satan loses authority. He loses power over your life. And if you can purpose now, as I'm about to pray, I know Satan will lose. I'm going to pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I know forces of the enemy will lose you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking with authority. I'm speaking with power. I'm speaking with authority because I know my stand in God. And I want to pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Satan will lose you. Will lose. Will leave you alone. That sickness will leave you now. That demon oppressing you will leave you now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But if you are not born again, Satan is still the one master over your life. So you must submit yourself to Jesus for Satan will leave you. Please, whatever you are, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I surrender my life. I surrender my dire being to you. Forgive me of my sins. Make me a new creation. Jesus, take over in my life. From today, I am born again. I'm a child of God. I am forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. You made that prayer. You're now a child of God. Deliverance is awaiting you now. I'll be praying with you and forces of the enemy will lose you in Jesus' mighty name. So I wanted to do one thing. Please, wherever you are, begin to cleanse yourself. Begin to sanctify yourself. Begin to purify yourself. Begin to tell the Lord to cleanse you, to forgive you. Someone has, has hurt you, has wounded you. Your heart is bleeding. I beseech you in the name of Jesus, by God's mercy, forgive that person, release that heaviness, release that bitterness, release that heaviness now. I'm about to pray. I know deliverance is going to manifest in your life. Begin to forgive. Open your mouth. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Forgive those people. Release yourself from that bondage. Release yourself from bondage. Release yourself from that bitterness. Forgive. Release that offense. In the name of Jesus, don't allow yourself to be offended. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mako sagabala bashaka talaba. Ze katoso gobolo boshi telebi. Ze katalaba zagadalaba. Molo boshi telebi so katalaba. Ze talama so katalaba shalalaba. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Now, I want us not to get to deliverance now. I want you to begin to break every hold of the enemy over your life. You see, when you give Satan a place, he gets a hold. When you don't resist him, when he has a hold in your life, he gets a foothold. When you don't deal with the foothold, the foothold becomes a stronger. And as the enemy keeps on advancing, he becomes a strong man in your life, and that bondage becomes strong for you to break it. So one thing I want you to surrender and resist that enemy, fight that enemy. Sickness is not your portion. Divorce is not your portion. That oppression, joblessness is not your portion. I want you to fight it. To fight that you see people are losing jobs. Don't allow yourself 
to go in the same drain, in the same river, you will get your job in the name of Jesus. You are a child of the Most High, and there is a way for you. There is, you are rising now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and begin to break that covenant of the enemy. Begin to break that hold of the enemy over your life. Begin to break that immorality. Begin to break that bondage over your life. Begin to break it. Begin to break it. Begin to break that witchcraft. Begin to break that witchcraft. Yes, you have been dreaming, eating at night. The enemy is trying to, to deposit things in your body. Flash them out. Begin to flash that poison. You have been dreaming, sleeping with the men. Sleeping with women at night, making love to, to, to people, even some you don't know. Begin to flush out those evil deposits in your body. Begin to command them. By the blood of Jesus, I flush you out of my body. By the blood of Jesus, I flush you out. Begin to pray. Pray violently. Whatever you are, lift up your voice. Flush out that poison. Flush out that sickness. Flush out that evil injection in your body. That poverty, flush it out. In the mighty name of Jesus, I flush out that evil injection. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I flush out that infirmity. I flush out that sickness. I flush out that disease. I flush out, I flush out by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by fire, by fire, by fire, by the blood of Jesus, by fire, by the blood of Jesus. By the anointed, by the anointed, by fire, begin to soak your body now. Yes, in the blood of Jesus, declare I soak my body, my spirit, my my soul in the fire. I soak my body, my soul, and my spirit in the fire of God. I soak my body, my soul, and my spirit in the blood of Jesus. Begin to soak yourself in the blood of Jesus, in the fire of the Holy Spirit, wherever you are, wherever you are right now. Yes, the anointing is heavy now. I feel the anointing. The anointing is heavy now. Maku zagada sakaparaba. Zekata sagaba. Zahatalimu sokato sakapa. Lema zegadi sakapi alaba zonda. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, another prayer we are going to pray. Something the Lord is revealing to me. Of someone bound, I've seen that object tied on the demonic world. Tied on the demonic world. Begin to pray. Anything will be presenting me in the demonic world. Be roasted by fire. Whether it was my photo, my money, or my piece of garment, which the, the witches or wizards took from me, and they used it to tie me in the in the demonic altars, in the demonic altars, in the ancestral altars, begin to declare fire. I roasted by fire. I roasted by fire. I roast that object. I roast that object by fire. Lose my viewers in the name of Jesus. I command you now. I command you by fire. I command you by fire. I command you by fire. I suck my viewers. I suck my listeners where they are. Yes, with the blood of Jesus. With the fire. With the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. I now, but I turn the hair around you now to be the fire, to be the blood of Jesus. The fire be surrounded by fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. The blood of Jesus Christ. If you are not seated near another person, if you are not near, seated next to someone, I want you to breathe out heavily by faith. Breathe out by faith and believe God as you breathe out whatever was in you, demonic will be flushed out. Breathe heavily now. Begin to breathe out heavily, heavily right now as I pray for you. Lebu sagada sakapa. I command every devil. Come on. Looks by fire. Looks by fire. Command that evil tree. Be a pruter. Be a pruter. That evil plantation. Be a pruter. Be a pruter. Be a pruter. Malobo shitele mi sota. Deliverance is happening now. Where you are, deliverance is taking place. It's happening now. Breathe out heavily. Where you are. Where you are now. Fire. By fire, by fire, I set you free. I set you free from that infirmity, from that sickness, from that disease. I set you free. I set you free. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free now. I command that infirmity. I command that sickness. I command that sickness. I command that demon. Where we royal charity, you spirit of witchcraft, come out actually, you may come out. Lose in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I suck my viewers, I suck my listeners, wherever they are, in the blood of Jesus, 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 in the blood of Jesus. Yes, deliverance is happening now. I suck in the blood of Jesus. I suck in the fire. I suck in the fire. I suck in the blood. In the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. Marco Sagabalaba, Molobo Shilalababa, Shalababu Satalaba, lay hand on that screen right now. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Marco Sagabalaba, Shilalababa, Malababu Shilalababu Satalaba, Molobo Shilalababu Satalaba, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, lift up your voice and begin to command the release of your blessing. Begin to command the release of your wedding, the release of your marriage, the release of your fiancé, the release of your job. Open your mouth, wherever you are. Begin to command now. That miracle must answer you. That blessing must answer you. Whatever the heaven was holding, yes, must be released. Must be released. I command the release of that blessing. I command the release of your possession, of your victory. I command the release. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Let there be breakthrough. Let there be light. Let there be breakthrough. Malaba Bushi Talaba. Let there be light in the name of Jesus. Let there be breakthrough right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare fire. Holy Ghost in fire. Open your mouth once again. Declare fire. Fire. Holy Ghost in fire. Upon your finances. Upon your children. Upon your marriage. Upon your husband. Upon your wife. Declare fire. Holy Ghost in fire, Holy Ghost in fire, Holy Ghost in fire. We declare fire in the atmosphere of Kenya, in the atmosphere of this nation. We declare Holy Ghost in fire, Holy Ghost in fire, Holy Ghost in fire in the atmosphere of this nation. I declare fire, 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 Holy Ghost in fire. I set this nation free, free from Corona, free from COVID 19. Le mou shalababu satalaba, ze katalaba shalababa. I destroy that witchcraft. I destroy that witchcraft. I destroy that witchcraft. I destroy that witchcraft. I destroy that witchcraft over your life. I break it. I break it. I break it. Makosa gabala babu shilalababa. You are free. You are delivered. You are free. You are delivered. Open your mouth. Begin to thank God. Give Him thanks. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Give Him praise. Whatever you are, tell Him thank you for deliverance. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for liberty. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed and God bless you. Shalom, shalom. God bless you big. I believe you are blessed. I believe you are delivered. You are free. Walk in the freedom you have received tonight. Walk in the consciousness of your freedom. Confess it. Don't keep quiet. Confess it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, please. You can email us your, 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 your testimony. You can call us. We, we, we are ready to receive your testimony. Many people have been calling and are praying with them over the phone. And miracles are happening in the name of Jesus Christ. Testimonies are happening. Distance is not a barrier. The power of God is right where you are in Jesus' precious name. Our number is 0702. Seven one three one five eight. I repeat, our number is zero seven zero two seven one three one five eight. Please call us and send your SMS. We are waiting to hear from you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, so you can do the same on the Facebook page, and the Lord bless you. There's some time or so we want. To practice the word we are hearing, we must practice the word we are hearing. A man called Isaac chose to sow during famine, Genesis 26. And the Bible says he sowed in that time of famine. And while others were ravaging, wallowing in famine, the man became mighty. The Bible says he was great until he became very mighty. He had the Bible calling him very mighty. He had plenty of silver and gold, cattle, 
He became a mighty than a, a nation. And we see the king and his officials coming to make obeisance to him because he had become mightier than the nation. Please, it is by the word. He had a word from God telling him, so in this time of famine, and he obeyed. Obey the word of God. Don't eat your tithe. Continue sowing. And the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. We have our till number for those who want to give their offering and their tithe. Those who want to give their tithe and their offering, we have our Mpesa till number, which is 586 916. 586 916. Once again, 586 916. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you are doing the same. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to bless that offering. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for the offering by your people. Others are even sending it later. I thank you for their tithe, for their giving, for their sacrifice. That they receive it. Bless them. Deliver their finances by this offering. None will ever go down. Let them scale higher and higher by the day. For the power of the just is ordained to shine bright and brighter until the perfect day. Let it be so in their lives and let your name be exalted. We love you and we worship you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom. We can share goodness together in fellowship, wherever you are. Thank you so much for those who are watching. I can see people from all over, even from outside the nation. You have been following. God bless you so much. God bless you. GLCC family, God bless you. We love you so much. Thank you for your commitment and your continued support and commitment to the work of God. God bless you so much. Bless your goodness, surely. Goodness and mercy, signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of God forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. God bless you. Remember on Sunday, I'll be here as from 10, please, in the morning. On Sunday, I'll be here. Please, I welcome you onto this platform. And we shall also be doing phone conferencing. Phone conferencing for those people who maybe are not in a place where they have video. They can watch through video or they don't have bundles. We can still do what you call phone conferencing. You call, call conferencing whereby we can call you and we shall be able to reach you. You shall be hearing the message, but you shall not be able to see me. So the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord enlarge you. We love you so much. God bless you. Shalom.